Dear Lana, welcome to our human resource management subject in the manifested uh, publishers learning platform. And uh, in our lesson today, we are looking at uh, theories of uh, human resource management. And uh, in the theories of human resource management, we are going to look at uh, foundational theories of human resource management, where we shall uh, have an opportunity to look at uh, uh, organizational behavior, uh, motivation, ability, motivation and opportunity, AMO theory, resource-based theory, institutional theory, human capital theory, agency theory, uh, contingency theory. Then we will also have an opportunity to look at uh, motivation theories and practice of uh, human resource management where we shall uh, look at uh, classical theories of uh, motivation. And uh, in the classical theories of motivation, we look at uh, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Douglas MacGregor theory X and theory Y, uh, Frederick Hasberg's two-factor theory. Then we shall make progress, uh, learn, and uh, look at uh, other theories of uh, motivation, where we shall be able to look at uh, Vroom's expectancy theory, uh, equity theory, goal theory, uh, reinforcement theory, McEckland's theory of needs, ERG theory of motivation, and ultimately in our theories of human resource management and related areas, we shall be able to look at motivation in the, work, in the workplace, <clears throat> where we shall have a look at uh, importance of motivation, team motivation, features of a good motivation system. So what uh, needs to be appreciated, Lana, is that uh, the subject of human resource management borrows from theories that have been uh, tested and tried, and those ideas are used in the human resource management uh, discipline to try and uh, be able to reinforce the functional area to be able to integrate uh, human resources within other organizational functions so that uh, the desired objectives are achieved. So today, as we continue with our lessons under the theories of human resource management, we are going to have an opportunity to look at uh, organizational behavior. And uh, dear Lana, when it comes to organizational behavior, organizational behavior may be looked at as uh, the study of uh, the structure, the study of the structure, uh, functioning, and performance of organizations, and the behavior, and the behavior, or you can say the conduct of groups and individuals within them. Organizational behavior is uh, the study of uh, structure, uh, functioning and performance of organizations and behavior of groups and individuals within them. So the reason why human resource management is interested in organizational behavior is because you have departments in organizations, you have people, you have individuals, and these individuals interact. And uh, oftentimes there could be scenarios that require you to understand how people behave and how they can be motivated to be able to achieve uh, individual goals, organizational goals, societal goals. So that's why it's very relevant uh, for the discipline of human resource management to understand behavior, to be able to drive uh, organizational uh, objectives, to be able to realize the results that are intended. So dear Lana, we want to proceed and look at uh, the characteristics of uh, organizational behavior. What are some of the characteristics of organizational behavior or features of organizational behavior? And uh, organizational behavior is a way of thinking, is a way of thinking uh, about individuals, about individuals, about groups, about uh, uh, organizations. Why are some organizations uh, performing better than others, yet they are within the same environment? How do groups behave over a period of time? The way a group was behaving last year, the way a group behaves now, the way a group behaves next year. 
So a way of thinking and looking at how organizations behave is a characteristic of organizational behavior. And then organizational behavior utilizes the scientific method of studying variables, studying uh, indicators within a given setting in relation to how the variables relate to each other. So you may want to find out uh, when you look at training, for example, how does training influence employee performance? How does that uh, come into being? What should be done to ensure that training is uh, applicable or uh, relevant to a given setting? Then the third one, Lana, uh, uh, the third characteristic of organizational behavior is that organizational behavior is uh, performance oriented. And by performance oriented, we, we mean that it deals with factors affecting performance and how they can be improved. For example, if you do a pestel analysis, you are looking at uh, political aspects, economic aspects, social aspects, legal aspects. How do these uh, particular aspects impede or underlie uh, the performance of organizations? Then another characteristic of uh, performance, uh, organizational behavior is that it is multidisciplinary in the sense that uh, organizational behavior uses principles, models, uh, theories, and methods from other disciplines. Uh, take an example, uh, Lana. You look at, uh, for example, uh, reward management. When it comes to the reward management of workers, then uh, uh, this will borrow heavily from economics. This will borrow heavily from accounting. This will borrow heavily from uh, uh, maybe micro and macroeconomic aspects and so on. And when it comes to methods, for example, you have methods, for example, of recruitment, methods of selection, methods of learning and development, and those will heavily be borrowed from pedagogy, will heavily be borrowed from uh, education and so on. And that's what we are saying. Uh, one of the characteristics of organizational behavior is that it is multidisciplinary or multi-pronged uh, multi in terms of uh, the disciplinary approaches. Then the aspect, the, the, another characteristic of organizational behavior is that uh, it is application oriented in the sense that it is concerned with providing useful answers to questions which arise when managing people. For instance, workers may argue that uh, the way they are being disciplined uh, is not fair. The way they are being remunerated is not fair. The way they are being, for example, transferred and maybe deployed, that is not fair. So when such problems arise, then the discipline of uh, uh, the, the, the area of organizational behavior will want to look at this particular kind of arrangements, uh, will look at uh, uh, the concerns that workers may have and be able to provide uh, useful answers to those particular occurrences. So dear Lana, in our lesson today, we have uh, looked at uh, theories of uh, uh, human resource uh, management, and we have indicated that uh, under the theories of uh, human resource management, we shall be looking at uh, foundational theories of human resource management, and uh, we have looked at the area of uh, organizational behavior, and we have indicated that we shall look at motivation. We shall also be able to, in our subsequent lessons, look at uh, ability, motivation, and opportunity theory. We will also have a chance to look at resource-based theory, institutional theory, human capital theory, agency theory, contingency theory. Then we will move on and uh, look at motivation theories and uh, the practice of human resource management, where we shall look at the classical theories of motivation. Uh, and these theories will uh, include Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We'll also look at uh, Douglas MacGregor, Theory X and Theory Y, uh, Frederick Hasberg's two-factor theory. Then we shall proceed and look at uh, other theories uh, of uh, motivation where we look at uh, rooms, uh, expectancy theory, uh, equity theory, a goal theory, reinforcement theory, McKechlan's theory of needs, and ERG theory of motivation. Then uh, 
as we wind up that uh, particular area of uh, theories of motivation, we shall be able to look at the importance of motivation, uh, team motivation, features of a good motivation system. And uh, today again, Lana, we have uh, looked at uh, organizational behavior, uh, where we have looked at uh, uh, and indicated that organizational behavior is the study of uh, the structure, functioning, and performance of organizations and behavior of groups, individuals, and individuals within those particular organizations. Then we have also looked at the characteristics of organizational behavior where we have indicated that uh, one, uh, organizational behavior is a way of thinking about individuals, about groups, about and organizations. Two, organizational behavior uses scientific method in studying variables and relationships. Three, organizational behavior is performance oriented and deals with the factors affecting performance and how they can be improved. Number four, organizational behavior is multidisciplinary and uses principles, models, theories, and methods from other disciplines uh, like economics, accounting, and accounting. Number five, another characteristic of organizational behavior is that it is application oriented and it is concerned with providing useful answers to questions which arise when managing people. For example, workers may claim that they have not been treated well or there could be conflicts in the work environment as the case might be. So dear Lana, uh, you have an assignment which you need to work on. Assignment. Uh, after our lesson today, which uh, is uh, the lesson we have tackled today was uh, organizational behavior and uh, uh, theories of uh, human resource management and your assignment is uh, describe describe the characteristics uh, characteristics of organizational behavior organizational behavior describe the characteristics of organizational behavior so Lana, that is our assignment for today. Uh, today's lesson that was uh, theories of uh, human resource management under uh, the human resource management subject. Thank you for being attentive in our lesson.